Hello and welcome into Best Bets. What is going on? My name is Matt O'Leary. I am joined as always by Newsday's NFL pick columnist Joe Maniello. Joe, how are you? Doing good, man. How are you? Doing pretty good. A three and two week for you last week bumps you to five and five. I went two and three, had a tough week after a nice start in week one. Six and four. So one game back. We're we're right back in this race here, uh, going the rest of the way. Love it. Yeah, I keep losing with the uh, local teams, the local teams. Yeah, hope, hopefully that changes uh, this week. The Giants are on Thursday Night Football, so this episode's coming out a day early so we could talk about the Giants and the 49ers. 49ers, big favorites in this game. Ten and a half points the spread is up to. What's your feel for this? Yeah, I mean, everyone, everyone is picking the Niners here. Uh, I think it's too many points. I'm picking the Giants. Uh, I mean, you know, this, you know, as I wrote my column today in the Thursday Newsday, everything is against the Giants. Daniel Barkley. San Francisco home opener, second row game in five days. Daniel Jones, one and ten, prime time. Andrew Thomas is out too. I mean, so many things are going against the Giants here, but I don't know. I, I feel like they're going to play well. I, just backs against the wall. I think last week's win is um, being downplayed because of the Barkley injury. Uh, when you win that kind of game, even, even though it's against Arizona, to, to win, you know, down 20 nothing, 28 7, to have that kind of win, <clears throat> I think that kind of plays over into next week. And the fact that they're playing right away, almost in a way helps them like to just that momentum can carry over possibly and I just think Brian Dayball you know a big fan of him and Wink Martindale I think they're going to have a good game plan here the Niners are obviously top three team in the NFL and there's no they should win this game but I just don't see it being a blowout so 10 and a half I like it at 10 I love it at 10 and a half I don't think it's going to be 34-17 I, I think it's going to be like 30-23 to 30-27 I think the Giants are going to play well all game they got to get the ball at Jalen Hyatt I think he's a game changer Get Darren Waller involved. Uh, Matt Breida against his former team, maybe. He'll have some extra motivation there. But, uh, you know, Stack, stack is decked dex against the Giants. So I, I just think that uh, 10 and a half is way too big. So I'm going to take the point. Okay. I am going to go with the 49ers in this one. I under, I understand where you're coming from on it. I just think you mentioned some of those things that are going up against, uh, are going against the Giants in this one. It's a, a short week. You lost your star running back in, in Saquon Barkley. He's not playing in this game. Andrew Thomas is not playing. Uh, their one of their guards is banged up and they're going up against a really, really good defensive line. We talk about the, the 49ers and the Eagles and the Jets for having some of the best lines in the league. And, you know, I, I think that's going to be really, really tough for them. And then on the defensive side of the ball, what the 49ers do so well is running the football. I think that's an area that they could take advantage of against this Giants defense uh, with Christian McCaffrey, who's just been absolutely unbelievable. So uh, I, they've been rolling. The 49ers look like the best team right now, maybe with the Cowboys that 30, 30 points in back to back games. Uh, they they let the Rams hang around in a divisional game, 30 to 23. Uh, but I, this one, maybe I'm the I'm the sucker for buying into all these things for that seem to be going the way of the 49ers setting up for this game uh, and going against the Giants. But I, I just think matchup wise, a team that's going to run the ball, play excellent defense, uh, and is explosive. I, I think that's a tough matchup for the Giants on a short week without their two best players on the offensive side of the ball in their their star left tackle and Andrew Thomas and Saquon Barkley running the football. I, I don't know if I I trust uh, putting this game solely on on Daniel Jones to throw it. I mean I. I I think the Giants are much better off when they are uh, a sp- bit more balanced offense and running the football, and I do think we're going to see a little bit of a drop-off there in the rushing department with no Saquon Barkley. So I'm buying into the hype. I'm going to take the 49ers. I think they win big, 33-10, something like that. So. Oh, wow. Uh, as for the other New York local, the New York Jets coming off a tough loss to the Dallas Cowboys. They are back at home against the New England Patriots. They're two-and-a-half-point dogs <laughs> at home. What's your feel for this game? Yeah, I definitely don't want to take Zach Wilson here against the Patriots. Uh, I, I remember saying it in, uh, at, at the office Sunday night. I'm, I'm, I just can't do it. I can't take Zach Wilson again. But I'm taking the Jets again here. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> to me, it's not about Zach Wilson. No, this is about the Jets' defense. Uh, they couldn't get, out, couldn't get off the field last week in Dallas. They're the biggest reason they lost that game. Um, Dallas said it all week. I think they've been hearing it all week. I don't know. I mean, you know, everything says take the Patriots. They won 14 in a row. Last year, when the Jets were the better team, supposedly, they still found a way to beat them in two of the most I don't know, heartbreaking, dreadful kind of games, especially that punt return in New England. Zach Wilson's 0-4 against Belichick, two touchdowns, seven picks. 
everything's going to take the Patriots. So that usually happens. You take the other team. I think the defense shows up here. I think this is a low scoring game. You know, first to get 17 kind of wins, first to 17 wins kind of game. I can even see it being, you know, 13 10. I'm not really sure why the Patriots are favored. They're 0 2. You know, they play well. They probably should have beaten the Eagles. They outplayed them for most of that game. They had a 6 6. And they, they had their moments against the Dolphins. So, well, 0 2 at home. I mean, they're a desperate team here. Don't want to pull 0 3. But I feel like the Jets might, might be even more desperate here. Because if they win this game, <clears throat> even though Wilson to me isn't the answer for the whole season, 2 1 with 2 0 in the division. It's a huge win for them. So I think they'll be pumped up, home crowd. I think it's all about the defense. I think uh, that defensive line has to get after Mac Jones. And I think they show up. I think also um, Sauce Gardner and DJ Reed didn't have a, uh, they haven't been like as lights out as they, as they said they were going to be, you know, 85 Bears, all that all that talk. So I think they show up too. Maybe Gardner will uh, actually get an interception this week and won't drop the ball. So uh, I'm going with the Jets defense. Your low scoring game in the uh, Jets 17-13. Yeah, I'm with you on this one. I was all week I've been going back and forth on who I'm going to end up taking, but I agree with you. I think the defense bounces back in a big way. They got embarrassed in Dallas and you know, that defense is, very, is really prideful. They don't they don't like to get pushed around like that. It's rare that we see them get pushed around like that. And Robert Sala is, you know, a, a motivator coach. He's a players coach and I think he's in their ear all week, you know, telling them that, you know, they they got embarrassed and that, you know, there was a clip going around on, on Twitter from NFL Films about uh, C.D. Lamb and Dak Prescott talking about how they had all day to throw. I think that wakes up the the Jets' defensive line, who really had a tough day. But when you look at this matchup against the New England Patriots, in both games last year, the Jets allowed one offensive touchdown, in, in counting for both of them, and they lo- somehow lost both those games. The quarterback play was absolutely abysmal, but something the Patriots didn't see was Brees Hall. And I know they only gave him the ball four times against the Dallas Cowboys, which is a joke. But earlier this week, Robert Sala spoke about getting Brees to haul more carries. They're going to use him more. And I think you have to lean on the run game heavy uh, in this game. You, you mentioned the numbers for, uh, for Zach Wilson against the Patriots. They're terrible. Uh, both games last year were arguably his worst games of the season. Uh, in in those two games against the Pats, just really, really bad. I think this is one of those games where it looks like it sets the NFL back 30, 40 years. Where it's like a 14-7 game, like a really ugly, low-scoring game. But to me, it's more about the defense, the, the Jets' defensive line against a Patriots' offensive line that's really struggled. Not to say that the Jets' offensive line hasn't struggled. They have, but I like the Jets' defense more than I like the Patriots' defense. So give me a, a low-scoring, you said 30, 13-10 sounds good, 14-7, something like that. But I think the Jets squeak one out at home and get a much-needed win against the Patriots. How about uh, best – we'll do best bets before we do game of the week. We're going to do the two Monday night games. So since they're last, we'll, we'll save that for the end. We'll do a best bet, then an underdog. Who's one you really like this week? There's a couple games I like. Uh, I went back and forth between two games. I like the Vikings a lot at home against the Chargers. I feel like – it's going to find a way at home. Uh, the Chargers always lose those games, but uh, it's only one and a half. I'm going to go with the team I feel like is uh, probably maybe maybe the most complete team in the NFL right now. After well, San Francisco and Dallas probably, but right there with them, top three, uh, the Miami Dolphins, uh, minus six and a half at home against Denver. Uh, Denver, 0-2 to start the year at home. One point loss and two point loss, but the defense has been really bad. They let the uh, commanders come back from 18 down. And, you know, Russell Wilson hasn't played that bad. He's actually looked good, but... Uh, I don't know, that Denver defense, less, the last team I want to play now is a team like Miami, which can score in bunches. Uh, Tua and Tyreek uh, have been playing great. Uh, so many weapons. Uh, even your boy Braxton Berrios is getting involved there. <laughs> uh, he most uh Mike McDaniels is a great coach. And uh, I just don't, I feel like Denver could, you know, you don't want to be 0 3 and then you go in there. <clears throat> you see things getting uh, reeling there with Sean Payton. So I just feel like it's a good spot for Miami home opener. They do play at Buffalo next week, so I'm always worried about them looking ahead, but it's their home opener. I think they'll be focused, and uh, I just think it's a really bad matchup for the Denver defense, which has been one of the worst in the NFL. So I'll lay the six and a half, and hopefully uh, they win by seven. Yeah, I like that pick a lot. Uh, That's definitely one I agree with. I'm going to go a different direction for my best bet. Similar spread, though. I'm going to take the Seahawks minus six against the Panthers. I thought Seattle's offense looked like they got back in gear last week. A nice win on the road there against the Detroit Lions. And looking at this Panthers team, they've really struggled offensively out of the gate. Uh, Bryce Young's, uh, you know, has had a tough go of it. 
and, and they're you know they're still a little bit of ways. Their defense is hung tough, but an area where they where they've struggled. While their their pass defense has been okay, their run defense has been pretty tough. So I think this is a Kenneth Walker game. They're just going to get him going um, and really try to you know run the football. And that that's a really tough ask for a young quarterback playing his third ever game in the NFL to go on the road in Seattle, a very tough environment to play in. They've struggled through their first two games. You know, I, I think yeah, I'm not out on Bryce Young, obviously, yet. It's way too early for that. I think they have a good coach. But I just think Seattle getting back in gear uh, in week two after getting embarrassed in week one. They're a really well-coached team with Pete Carroll. Geno Smith's played well for them. Uh, I, I think they win this game something like 27 to 13. I think they win going away. I was away. thinking the same score. Okay, there we go. We're on the same page with, with that one, too. So I'll absolutely take that. Love it. Yeah, I like, I like the other two. Bryce Young, I mean, I agree. It's only two games, but he hasn't looked at it at all. It, it, every throw is like around the line of scrimmage, 10 yards, and hasn't thrown one ball down the field. Team, so I agree. It's a tough matchup. Absolutely. So how about an underdog this week? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with I picked the Dolphins last week. I'm going with another team I won with last week. I feel like whenever I pick them, they always, I always win. So I'm going to go back to the, to the well with the Pittsburgh Steelers getting two and a half Sunday night in Las Vegas. Um, I think the line's only that the line's only two and a half because the Steelers' offense looked so bad last week. They they beat the Browns, but they the the offense didn't even reach the red zone, which is kind of hard to believe. But they had two defensive touchdowns. <clears throat> he just knew the Browns were going to blow that game. And uh, the Steelers, to me, like you know, we always talk about Mike Tomlin being one of the best coaches, and I think the huge coaching coaching mismatch with uh, Josh McDaniels, and uh, you know, no home field advantage, black and uh, black and gold. Uh, they're going to invade Vegas, so Steelers fans will show up always. And I think this is a bounce back game for Kenny Pickett in the offense. The Raiders, to me, uh, they had one nice drive last week in Buffalo. They went up seven nothing, and they lost thirty eight ten. To me, they're not a they're like a five win team. I, I don't think they're doing anything. Steelers, to me, uh, have a lot of talent. Offense will get back on track. Defense always shows up, and a huge coaching mismatch. So, you know, whenever you think the underdog is going to win outright, you take the points. So easy pick for me, Steelers. Yeah, I, that's another one that I love uh, from you as well. I, I think the Steelers win that game on the road and. Uh, another game where I'm going to take a team that I took already once as an underdog. I should have did it again last week, but the the Tennessee Titans plus three and a half against the Browns, who you just mentioned, who lost to the Pittsburgh Steelers. The The Browns are in a really tough spot right now. Deshaun Watson does not look like the player he was in Houston, and they just lost Nick Chubb, who's arguably you know the best running back in the sport. And you know Jerome Ford, I thought, played well coming in for them, and they, they added Kareem Hunt back, but I don't know how much he has really left in the tank here but we we always give the numbers for for Vrabel against the spread but even how about outright wins because I think Tennessee wins this game outright and they're you're getting three and a half points here they've had 23 outright wins as an underdog since 2018 which is the most in the NFL this is another spot where I think Tennessee as an underdog is a is a good bet I just I don't trust the Browns on, on offense at all especially without Nick Chubb uh, Watson looks like a shell of himself I think the Titans win this one uh, low, lower scoring game, but twenty to seventeen, they come away with this win, something like that. Yeah, I like, I like the Titans getting the points. I'm not, I'm sure, I'm not sure if they're going to win, but uh, I think it's going to be a close game. Like the Titans always seem to play. Absolutely. So let's get to those two Monday night games: uh, the Eagles and the Bucks. The Bucks are a little bit of a surprise team through the first two weeks, but the Eagles are four and a half point favorites here. What's your play? Yes, I think the spread, the spread went down. Everyone seems to be taking the Bucks here to cover. Uh, they were they were one of my under teams, uh, under six and a half. But they play well. You get Baker Mayfield and defense credit, but I like the Eagles here. Four and a half, a small number. If they win by three, so be it. But I'm not going to try to overthink it. Um, Eagles play Thursday night, so you got the extra, extra rest Thursday night to Monday night. And, you know, they're 2 0, and they haven't really played like their 100%, you know, great game from start to finish. So I think we could, I think we could get that here in prime time. Uh, I'm not really buying the Bucks 2 uh, 0 start. I don't think they're a contender. So I'm going to go with a better team here. I think Jalen Hurts uh, gets it going. John Jerry Smith looked great against the Vikings. And we know about that defensive line and the deep roster. So I'm going to take the, uh, the Eagles lane for now. Yeah, I'm with you here. Uh, I think the Bucks have been a cool story through the first two weeks. It's a team that most people, myself included, expected not to be very good this year. But they've come out. They had, you know, a, a couple of wins already to start their season, and uh, you know that's obviously great for them. But really tough matchup against the Eagles, who you mentioned that they're two and zero, but they haven't really looked like the Super Bowl contending Eagles that we saw 
last year. I definitely think that changes this week. Uh, I think Jalen Hurts looks, you know, better than what he has. He had a bad uh, interception the, the last time out uh, on Thursday night. I think the extra rest, as you mentioned, absolutely helps. And I, I get it. Like this number keeps going down, which to me I think is uh, uh, it makes me feel even even more confident. I think they win this one, but by ten points, thirty to twenty, something like that. I, I think they they handle business here on the road on Monday Night Football. Why does it make you feel more confident? With the number going down, I just, I, I just think that people are are getting too much, uh, too much love here for the, for Tampa Bay. That's, That's all. So, anyway, let's do the final game: Rams and the Bengals. The Bengals are two and a half point favorites after starting zero and two. The Rams have had a little bit of a surprising start, one and one. They had a nice uh, upset win in Week One. Who do you like in this game? Yeah, interesting game here. Uh, the spread open at seven and a half, but then when Joe Burrow uh, complained about his calf injury at the end of the Ravens lost, uh, rock and went down, not Skyrocket, it went down to two and a half. <clears throat> so I prefer to get over three, but I'm going to take the, the Rams here. I mean, I don't feel great about it because the Bengals last year, last year the Bengals started 0 and 2. I, I don't remember picking against them week three against the Jets, and they beat the Jets, I think, by like 15. But uh, I mean, everything says the Bengals will bounce back here. Oh, they're too talented to go 0 and 3, but. I don't know. It feels a little different. Burrow doesn't look 100%. The offenses look really bad. Uh, so I thought they had win last week, but I'm back at home. So I don't know. That kind of calf injury is complaining about it. You know, even if, he may not even play. And if he does play Aaron Donald, you know, one big hit from Donald, he might not be in the game. I think the safer play is take the Rams. I mean, they looked really well. Uh, Matthew Scott, Puka Nakua, right? His name is yep. unbelievable. 20, 25 catches in two games, a, a record to start your, start your career. 15 catches last year. I couldn't believe it. I was doing the NFL roundup last week at work on Sunday night, you know, compiling all the for the Monday paper, and I, I couldn't believe he had 15 catches. I was like, "What? 15 catches?" But uh, <clears throat> yeah, the Rams they looked really well. You know, like you said, they beat Seattle on the road. They they gave the Niners a fight of the tie game at the half, and only because the Niners scored right before the half. I think it was 23-20 in the fourth quarter, and we all know what McVay did. It's so weird kicking a field goal down 10 with you know basically last play of the game, and they. Wound up covering some places and pushed. Luckily, it was a push in the paper. I would have been really upset. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like the Bengals this 0 2 start isn't like last year. I think they're going to. Uh, I think they're going to lose this game. I mean, hard, it's hard to believe, but something's not right with them. And uh, the Rams, you know, the rematch from Super Bowl from two years ago to which the Rams won 23 20. I think it'll be a close game like that. So uh, I'm going to take the Rams. I totally get that. Yeah, the Bengals have looked not like themselves. Um, although I, I think for me, and the reason why I'm going to end up taking the Bengals here minus two and a half, even though I agree, this is one you know confidence level isn't necessarily there like some of these other games. But for me, I think they started to look more like themselves in the second half of that game against the Ravens. T. Higgins ended up catching a couple of touchdowns, and obviously we're going to have to keep a close eye on on Joe Burrow and you know what how he's able to go and what he ends up looking like but they they are they, they are backs against the wall they are you know a super bowl contender who starts 0 and 2 they did it last year they started 0 and 2 and they came storming back uh, and and played really good football and ended up making the playoffs. I think we see a similar story for them this year. Uh, I think they bounce back and in a tight game they'll they'll win, but it'll be a you know maybe a twenty seven twenty three kind of game. I, I think the Bengals you know win this one a, a relatively tight one. Still get the cover, but. Um, I, I, the Rams have been a, a fun story also. Like No one's really expected their offense to be as good, uh, especially with uh, Cooper Cup out. But they, they've been impressive with some of their younger wide receivers, uh, and I think they'll give a, a better fight than, than some are expecting. But I still think the Bengals get this one done at the end of the day and win, win a tight one 27-23. So. Gotcha. Uh, let's run through these real quick. We got six games this week. Thursday night football is Giants and 49ers. I'm on the 49ers minus 10.5. Joe is going to take the Giants with the points. Jets, Pats, we're both on the Jets plus 2.5 in a a defensive battle. Best bet, my best bet is the Seahawks minus 6 against the Panthers, and Joe is on the Dolphins minus 6.5 against the Broncos. Underdog pick, Joe is taking the Steelers plus 2.5 against the Raiders. I'm taking the Titans plus 3.5 against the Cleveland Browns. Eagles Bucks on Monday night, both on the Eagles minus four and a half, and Rams and Bengals to close out the week. I like the Bengals. Joe is on the Rams plus two and a half. Joe, appreciate you joining me as always here for week three. Hi, Matt. Thanks so much.